Welcome back to another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I am your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie O'Leary. Uh, so we got some news for you guys. Uh, Antonio Chole is the first of what we expect to be many players who entered the portal this offseason. Uh, we have some some news and updates on guys we previously reported on Rutgers showing interest in the portal and a few other miscellaneous things. But first, our podcast is brought to you, uh, our presenting sponsor, I should say, is Night and Day Apparel. Calling all Rutgers students, alumni, and fans. Are you looking for new and unique Rutgers merchandise? Night and Day has you covered. From t-shirts to hoodies to drinkware and pet accessories, Night and Day focuses on providing the Rutgers community with exclusive, one-of-a-kind tailgating products. So be sure to check out the links in today's podcast description to their website and their social media accounts. So you can stay on top of everything Night and Day, including new merch drops and promotional announcements. Shop now and keep shopping. Uh, You know, with... I don't know if you can get it on time, but with St. Patty's Day right around the corner, they do have some pretty cool uh, St. Patrick's Day Rutgers gear. So check that out for sure. Code uh, Rutgers Rivals for, uh, I think it's 10% off? Yep. So. Um, additionally, uh, we, are brought, we are sponsored by the Cut app. Um, we've got a great new sponsor, and I love betting basically on anything, uh, especially with my friends, sports games, who's faster, who can, you know, win Mario Kart, that kind of stuff. So the Cut app allows you to do that. Uh, It's a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's legal in 40 plus states. It has customizable odds, tracking capabilities, and an entire social network, group chats, user profiles, and rewards. Uh, All the payments are made through the app, so you don't need Venmo or anything like that. Uh, If you use our promo code Believe Rutgers, that's B-L-E-A-V Rutgers, uh, you get a 10% welcome bonus, so don't forget to use that promo code. Cut. Keep, put your money where your mouth is. All right. So in the least surprising uh, news of the offseason, Antonio Chol has announced he is entering the portal. He is a guy who would have had three years of eligibility left, but he is leaving Rutgers after two years in the program. He redshirted last year. This year he played sparingly. I think he made an appearance in seven games. He was a guy who had a lot of promise. I remember specifically a Jerry Carino article from two summer, either last summer or two summers ago, where he was hyping him up as like the second best player on the court next to Cliff. So this is a guy who yeah. he was brought in because he was supposed to be a, a you know a shooting specialist and potentially a three and D type down the road. A big rangy guy. He had plenty of athleticism, but for whatever reason, didn't seem to click. Uh, what are you hearing about the the Chol transfer uh, on your end? Um, it's not super shocking whatsoever for the most part. Um, yeah, uh, Carino did say he looked really good in practice. I was also at that practice. I didn't think he was looking as good as Carino was hyping him up to be. But uh, Pike did hype him up quite a bit at times, saying he was like the uh, the best three point shooter on the team. And uh, I think it was that was one of the preseason press conferences, like right before training camp or right in the middle or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this really shouldn't come as a surprise because if you followed our, uh, what was our odds chart or whatever that we had, mm-hmm. um, we tweeted it out last, last night, this morning, last night, yesterday morning, I forget. Um, but yeah, I tweeted out yesterday and it was plus 1900 Antonio Chill to stay. And that was by far the highest. And it's, it just is what it is. Like he never cracked a rotation. Even when he did play, he played what, like a two minute game and that was it. And it's like, see ya, done. Um, yeah, this isn't really anything super shocking here. Yeah, by no means should this be a surprise to anybody who is either on the board or listens to this podcast. Um, I expect this, like I said, to be the first of many. Do you expect this to kind of be a slow roll? Like one guy announces a day or do you expect a big announcement kind of all at once about the rest of uh, the, the, the departures this offseason? So it's probably going to be a big announcement all at once. Um, I know people have been asking me on the boards, uh, basically saying like, "Hey, like, what? Who's next? When's it? When's it going to happen?" Blah blah blah. Like they're all like giggity about this whole thing. Like we need space. <laughs> we need space. Like we need to get yep. some portal guys. But uh, yeah, no, it's probably all going to happen at once, and it sounds like it's probably going to happen uh, closer to Monday because that's when the portal technically officially opens. From what I was told, the Chol thing wasn't really supposed to come out this early, but it did. It is what it is, and. Um, I'm expecting a uh, a mass exodus on Monday afternoon, probably maybe Tuesday. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it sounds like early next week is probably when you're going to hear a lot more news, and you're probably going to see. I, I, I'm kind of standing by what I said. I know I said it like tongue in cheek at first, but mm-hmm. I'm standing by five total. 
that's one. So I, I still think there's going to be four more. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they, they need to make some space. They're two over, even if, um, you know, nobody left. So there, there has to be departures regardless. Um, so this, you know, just expect it. It's going to probably happen Monday, like Richie said. And, um, yeah, here's, here's is, the yeah. updated scholarship yeah. chart. We're still one over with the, the Chole announcement. Um, any any names specifically that you probably I know we already talked about the odds, but have anything changed with those odds in your in your mind, or are they still about accurate what we previously? I think they're pr pretty close to accurate still. Um, not a, not a lot has changed. It's probably been what a week and a half, two weeks now since that yeah. um, that pod. Um, I do think there's a chance. Derek Simpson could stay, but I still think he probably leaves. Um, Oscar's the weird one. I know I put him at plus 150 to return, which would make it almost seem like it's kind of favorable to stay, but I'm starting to lean more towards he's not going to return. But again, if you get all these guys, whatever, they, these guys leave, and you get a couple portal guys, and then it's like, hey, like we still have a 13th ship. And I know Pike's been giving it to the walk-ons the past couple years. Uh, not this past season specifically, but um, the three years, four years before that, I think if if you have that ship, you got to get Palmquist on the team. He raves about this this guy as a teammate. Like it's insane. Even senior day, like he went out of his way to again like rave about um or the senior day press conference we went out of his way to rave again about Oscar Palmquist and how great of a teammate he was. And he kept saying he's not good, he's great. This man will cheer you on even if you're airballing threes. Like you saw him this year, he was cheering on guys that were yep. airballing layups. <laughs> so. It uh yep. yeah, it'd be hard to not not have him on the team, but no, for the most part, I think everything's still probably status quo. Um, looking back at those odds, actually, I don't know what I did with him. Um, I think I had the Rutgers Griffiths. podcast. Um, yeah, I think I had Griffiths like in a weird spot. I had Griffiths minus five hundred. I'd probably, I'd probably go. Davis and Griffith's even higher than that minus 500. I know technically they said they're coming back, so it doesn't, mm. it's cheating, I guess. But um, yeah, for the most part, I think it's all still pretty accurate. I might even put uh, Wolfolk at like a plus 400 now instead of plus 200, which he was. I might. Yeah, that's probably the only other thing I changed. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh... There's going to be a lot of guys in the portal. Just put it like that, and it's not just at Rutgers. It's it's everywhere. Is this true? Did Kenny Pickett just get traded to the Eagles? He did, yeah. What the hell? Wild. I, I thought that the <clears throat> I, I figured the Eagles would be in the market for a backup because their current backup, I think, is Tanner McKee, and he doesn't really play in any way, shape, or form yes. like uh, like Jalen Hurts does. I was hoping they would go after uh, Justin Fields, um, get him at, well, get him as like a basically throwaway piece for the Bears because they have to move him. They can't go into uh, the draft with him still on the roster. And it sounds like there's not really much of a market for him. So trading a yeah. day three pick is what I was hoping. But uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah um, that was just, I, that's just wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that did just happen. That's insane. Um, let's talk about, we talked about the guys who are departing and kind of a timeline for when that should be expected. Let's talk about some of the players uh, who Rutgers might be involved with or looking at. There was mm -hmm. two specific names we had previously discussed. Uh, one was Javon Porter, who is at Pepperdine. He is the younger brother of Michael Porter Jr. and Jonte Porter. Uh, what are you hearing on him? Was that was that reliable? Was that accurate when we, uh, we were talking about last time? Or does that sound like that's not actually happening? So from what I was told is, number one, he's going to Missouri. Um, yeah. that's like set in stone. Basically, uh, the two brothers did go to Missouri. He's a Missouri native. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, they also suck. So they need some help. Um, badly. Yep. I think they went winless in SEC, if I recall correctly. Yes, they did. That's, that is rough. Um, anyway, like we, we see these tweets where it's like, this guy says he has Rutgers interest. This guy says he doesn't. I'm told no phone call actually took place between Rutgers and Porter. This is just like one of those situations. It sounds like where there's like seven schools on there and it's like, yo, hey, let's hype them up a little more. That's whoever tweeted it posted like four more schools. And it was like, whatever, here, just throw Rutgers on there. That, that'll help. Um, but yeah, no, it doesn't sound like Rutgers is really interested in Porter at all, like whatsoever for the most part. And like I said, it also does seem like it's set in stone where he's going. So it's just more of, uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I, I didn't expect them to land him, but that was, 
I always I thought that was an interesting name. The other was a more of a local kid, uh, Penguard Clark Slash Shirt. Uh, he's got one year of eligibility. He's, I think mm-hmm. he's listed at six one one eighty. He's a sharpshooter. Uh, what are you hearing around Slash Shirt? Sounds like it's all West Coast. Uh, he is a California native who was playing in at University of Penn. Um, <clears throat> sounds like he wants to go back to that West Coast. Although I did, I did hear a couple schools were out there, um, like Texas A and M, Kansas, and Indiana. I can't confirm Rutgers did reach out to him. There was a phone call that took place to try to gauge his interest, and that's where it gets a little interesting because. Is, why is Rutgers looking into a, a guard option? Unless a couple guards were leaving. Yeah, I think it'd be a surprise if that was not the case. Um, clearly, Rutgers is targeting a shooter or two in the portal, which uh, we definitely need, we drastically yeah. need. Um, sure. And a guy like Slasher, I think he shot close to 40% from three this past year. At Penn. Yeah, he put up some crazy good numbers for them. Um, I know people on our boards like the compare uh and compare him to who was it cam spencer <laughs> like yeah i mean they're not really that he's similar. Not, yeah, yeah at all uh attempted six per game and shot at a 42.2 percent rate from three yeah that is uh, outstanding pretty fucking good um yeah. and it's not like football i've said this before it's not like football where he does it at this lower level and can he do it at this level and it's like no if you're a shooter you're a shooter <laughs> that's that's yeah, it yep. like yep um, yeah, but it doesn't sound like Rutgers is going to uh, end up landing them, although they, they did reach out, and um, we've been told multiple times, people keep asking me, like, where's the defense is going to be if Mott Mag leaves, and it's like, Jeremiah Williams is your defense. Um, Ace Bailey has a little bit of a paint presence on defense, but they're, they want offense. They want to get more offense on this team, and they, they don't think it's a secret, number one, and number two, they need it. They, they're averaging yeah. what? <laughs> like... They're, they're, they have three of the top bottom game. four like effective field goal percentages in high high major basketball. One of those guys was like the worst in like all, almost all the worst of all college basketball. Like that's just they need offense, some type of offense. So, ugh, it's gonna be interesting this year, off season. Yeah, I, and expect expect things to kind of blow up next week um, regarding who's you know being contacted by Rutgers and interest being shown. Are there any other names? <laughs> that you are aware of right now that Rutgers has reached out to? Um, it sounds like they're starting to peek into uh, – what, what's the kids from Cornell that didn't play? Manon? Uh, Chris Manon. Chris Manon. I thought it was Clark Manon for some reason. Um, it does sound like there is a little bit of interest there. It's it's very early, so it's it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say it's early. He's been in the portal since October technically. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, they're definitely going to peek into him. Um <clears throat> they want shooters. Like they really just want shooters. They need a shooter. Um, they want a big man too. I'm told that there's potential with someone. I can't really say much about it, but it's not like set in stone. So it's more so like they're waiting. But the fact that they're pushing a big man tells me that probably again that they're probably gonna lose a big man or two even. Um, I don't think Wolfolk ends up staying. I think Emmanuel Ogbold. There's a good chance he could leave. Um. Does he stay? I, I don't know. Like He didn't really show me much this year, to be honest with you. I think he was just not an enforcer. I know everyone's like, yeah, welcome him. He's, he's stepping on people. What an enforcer. And it's like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. How the hell do we defend that one? Like, <laughs> um, It's not. This isn't Duke where it's like, hey, that guy's like a first-team All-American. He can trip people. It's fine. Um, mm-hmm. This guy was like playing two minutes a game, and he was like stepping on people. And it's like, they had defenders. It was weird. Um but yeah, no, I I don't think he's gonna play much at all next year, and I think Somerville, like I said, Somerville's centered number two probably, um, yeah. and I think Cliff still leaves, whether it be portal or graduation, that's still to be determined. Still think he leaves, and I think you need a big man. So I think they'll definitely be active in the portal for a big man, but uh, no names as of yet, and you probably won't hear many this weekend at all. You'll probably have to wait till Monday when guys can actually start entering the portal for a change that aren't graduate transfers. Yeah, Manon is probably one of my favorite guys who's currently in the portal that has some kind of loose connections to Rutgers. Mm-hmm. So he is a guy who went to St. Joe's Regional. Uh, he spent a year at post-grad at St. Thomas More, but he's the highest rated guy in the Ivy League, according to Evan Maya, by a, a huge margin. He's mm-hmm. an elite defender. He only played, so the way Cornell plays, they, they have like a 10-man rotation. So he was <clears throat> first team uh, Ivy League, all Ivy League this year. But he only played 22 minutes a game. He averaged uh, 12.7 points a game, shooting 
58% from the field on nine attempts a game, 71% from the line, 35% from three, four rebounds a game, three assists a game, and almost two and a half steals a game. Uh, he's got length. He's got size. He's an explosive athlete. If you watch his highlights, it's like so many times it's just him like blowing by somebody and getting to the rim and dunking it. Um, very, very high level athlete. So he's a guy that I think would fit in perfectly here. And you have a guy who's playing in the Ivy league, uh, especially for, for four years. He's a guy who, uh, you know, probably pretty smart and, uh, experienced and he was a, the captain there. So you just got to, he would, he would be somebody who I would love to get. So glad to hear that we're at least somewhat interested in him. Yeah, this uh, it's going to be interesting to see who enters the portal still because like there's yep. so many names that are being rumored and mentioned and whatever. Like this whole Discord thing, like uh, that Troy Donovan runs. Like there's just multiple names. Like uh, who's who is the most recent? Uh, Mark Armstrong. Yeah. yeah, he mentioned Mark Armstrong <clears throat> possibly entering the portal. Who should sound familiar to most Rutgers fans? He was a guy that <clears throat> Rutgers recruited pretty heavily as a high school uh, athlete. I think he was ranked in the top 50. He's from St. Peter's Prep. Mm-hmm. Um, Rutgers came in second or third from him. I forget which one. I think it was uh, but he was also... Oh, really? He, I yeah. know he was high on Rutgers. Rutgers offered him. He came on campus multiple times for visits. But uh, he was a guy who played uh, with team, at Team USA with Dylan and Ace this past summer and, uh, when they went to Turkey. So he obviously knows Dylan. So... Uh, yeah, he hasn't entered yet, but he's a, a rumored name to possibly enter. Put it put it like this: if he's mentioning it, he's he's gonna enter. I think that's it. Yeah, yep. um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I think he's mentioned Mabako as well, who I think Rutgers will definitely peek at, but I'm not really sure they're gonna end up landing him for the sole fact that like he's he's gonna want minutes. He's gonna want scoring. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. want the ball. I mean, he'll get minutes. I shouldn't have said that, but. He's going to want to score, and he's going to want to get the ball a ton. And with Ace and Dylan, you're, and even Jeremiah, you're probably not going to get the ball a whole lot. So. Yeah, probably not. But, I mean, there will be opportunities to uh, get some minutes for, for both a wing and a guard and a big at Rutgers next year. So, uh, Oh, yeah, for sure. It'll be interesting to see who they target. Next week is going to be crazy. I am really excited for it. Uh, it's kind of... The, the calm before the storm, I'd say, right now. So, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to hit on before we head out of here today? Uh, no. I'd say it's going to be a relatively quiet weekend, it sounds like. Um, we'll see how quiet, because every time they say that, something something happens. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I wouldn't be tuned out completely, but I'd, I'd probably be a little tuned out this weekend. I don't think anything's going to happen. So, check in on... Uh, some bracket stuff, I guess. Oh, we're setting up a Yahoo bracket. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put the link in below if you want to join. Bunch of giveaways we got. We got a free year subscription of the Night Report. We got another Dylan Harper signed trading card. I'm working on getting a Rutgers jersey that we're going to give away too for uh, one of the top three. If you finish in the top three, you're going to get these prizes. Um, you're going to get some kind of prize, whether it be the, the year or whatever. It might, might be a combination of things. I'm still trying to figure out what a what I could do, I'll probably give away this, uh, what, what do you do with this? This, uh, Night and Day Apparel Trapezoid of Terror t-shirt ahead of next year. Okay. You might want to wear that next year. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, so, um, if you haven't already, join the, join that. Um, we have another giveaway. Or are we going to do that next week? We do. We have, uh, so, we will be, uh, doing the giveaway, uh, on Monday. Whenever we have our next podcast next week, um, uh, we will be doing the home field, uh, gift card giveaway we have two fifty dollar home field apparel gift cards that we're Mm -hmm. giving away um if you want to be entered this is your last chance uh you can either there's two ways you can do it you either write a review on apple Podcasts and mention this is march Mm -hmm. uh don't just put this is march just include it somewhere in your review or you could uh, make a comment below in this video uh with a comment uh this is march and you'll be entered. Uh, if you if you write a review on Apple Podcasts, you get two entries. If you write a review below, you'll get one. And we'll do the drawing on Monday. And we'll send those out to you guys uh, whenever you get back to us. Sweet. All right. So everybody get ready for next week because it's going to be crazy. But for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast. Signing off.